does this uh, opportunity mean to you and how, how did it interest you? How did you just kind of, you know, general how it came about? Yeah, so it, it, it kind of came out of nowhere. You know, we were, so I've been in Arizona for the last nine years and uh, was really happy there. We were doing a lot of good things and we were so engulfed in trying to make the playoffs that uh, when I received the phone call that the White Sox asked for permission, it was, I don't think something that was on the forefront of my mind, but the more I got to uh, know the people here, I got to know Chris, played against him, didn't really know him well, uh, but getting to spend time with him and hear his vision and, uh, you know, just seeing all the pieces that are here, seeing the division that, the, that we're in and uh, the opportunity, it was, you know, it was too good to pass up. What are some of the things that, obviously, we can look at the, the rankings and the guys that are on that D-backs team right now, but what are some of kind of the, the things that you're proudest of, of getting done in your time there? Yeah, you know, it was uh, it was a weird feeling yesterday watching that game because uh, I'm on this side and obviously, like, really excited about what we're doing here. But to see, um, you know, finished products on the field from guys that I had had when they are 15, 16, 17 years old coming into the organization, seeing where they were then and to where they are now and where the organization kind of was, uh, you know, a few years ago over there to where they are now. It's, it's exciting, and I think it gives a lot of hope and optimism here because, again, there's some really talented players, not only in the great but also in the minor leagues here right now. How much, how much do you hope that this job allows over the head of player development is, whether you're involved or other people, to be involved with the, the scouting and uh, seeing the players? Because it seems that um, makeup issue seems to be just as important as the athletic players are scouted and brought into it. Yeah, I think makeup's huge. You know, I think that's something we did really well when I was with the Diamondbacks during that time. Is, you know, we got talented players, but we also got really, really good makeup guys, high character guys. And, you know, it's so difficult going from the time you're drafted, whether you're a high school or college player, to get into the big leagues. And, you know, I just believe that the guys that have that high character, high makeup, really motivated, um, they, they do the best to get the best out of their abilities, and that gives them the best chance to get up here. I know you just uh, started but what, what do you envision your role being? I mean, is it, as assistant GM, what, what has Chris talked to you in the early stages about? Yeah, so I think we're still kind of navigating through exactly what it's going to look like, but I think I'll probably be involved in a lot of different areas, especially early on on the player development side. Just uh, I think that's where I have the most experience and kind of bring a, a different perspective. Uh, you know, Chris has done a great job on the, the PD side here. I kind of bring a little bit different perspective from my experiences previous. So uh, I'll be involved in that. We'll still hire a farm director, but I'll still be heavily involved, especially early on on that side. And then as we get into the off season with, you know, roster construction, player acquisition, all that, I'll, I'll be involved in that as well. How much did uh, Chris himself uh, come into play as far as you deciding to come here and you know the relationship you had being kind of equal? So, uh, yeah, that was a huge factor for me. You, you know, you always want to work with somebody that you, you enjoy being around. It was from our first conversation. It was just very easy conversation. I think we believe in a lot of the same things. We have a very similar background from not only playing, but also uh, working our way through scouting, player development, and uh, the latter. So, uh, yeah, there was a lot of comfort uh, you know, coming into a new situation. It was a little uneasy, but when you work for a guy that you really believe in, it makes it a lot easier. With Chris having, obviously, a lot of experience with this organization, it might be important to get some different perspectives from outside of this organization on that front. You know, early early days of your tenure, obviously, but uh, kind of what have you been able to provide and what do you think you'll be able to provide in, in that realm? Yeah, I think it's just another perspective. Right? I think he's part of his vision was bringing in people from other places where things have gone pretty well. And, you know, between me and Gene Watson and, and Bannister, um, a lot of his first week is just kind of been downloading ideas and things that we've seen in other places, things that have worked, things that maybe haven't worked, and also getting to know how things are done here. So uh, I, I, I like the collection of, like, ideas that we have so far, and I think we'll continue to build on that. How is your sort of plan base sort of shape? Yeah, I think that's been huge. You know, I think uh, we're all uh, a byproduct of, of our experiences, and I can relate to a lot of the things that these guys have gone through. You know, I've been a prospect coming up, I've been in big leagues, and I've been the guy that's, you know, grinding in the minor leagues on the way down to it. So I kind of experience you know, a lot of different aspects of it. And so you keep that, uh, you know, I can relate to a lot of what these guys are going through. And then at the same time, being on this side for a number of years now, you, you understand how it works on this side. And I think uh, it helps. You know, I think there's the human element too, as much as like there is. Um, and we truly believe in like the, the data and, and 
uh, the analytics, but I also think like the human element and taking that into consideration too when you're making de uh, decisions is important. We talked about this before the quarter started, but your dad, very well known for his account, I mean, everything he did, but locally, for what he did at Juliet Central, what's it mean to him that you're coming back to, to work in Chicago? Oh, he was so excited. I mean, this is, this is home. He's, he, he moved away when he was 17 after he got drafted. His whole family moved down to Houston, and that's where I grew up, and my, a lot of my family still is, but uh, he, he was so excited. This is his favorite team growing up. This was, you know, across the street, was here where he watched a lot of games as a kid, and he also played his first game in the big leagues uh, there. So this, this place means a lot to him and uh, to our family. What's his influence on you overall as a baseball person? Oh, it's huge. He's my hero. Right? I think he's why I got into baseball at such a young age. He's always been a not only somebody I looked up to, but also a resource because a lot of the things that I went through in this game, not only playing, but you know, on the other side, he's, he's coached, he's worked in, uh, he's worked uh, in, in media, he's done a lot of different things. So yeah, he's been a he's been a huge, huge resource for me and, and somebody that I still talk to every day. We talk, we talk life, we talk baseball. He's always been there for me, and yeah, I, I think he couldn't be prouder right now. Josh, how do you hire the right people as instructors and coaches that can relate to the the players now and uh, how they've been brought up. How, how much attention do you have to pay to that now compared to maybe when your dad played and they said, well, you know, we're hiring this guy because he played in the big leagues and he can hit ground balls and throw a batting practice. Yeah, we were talking about that the other day. The, the requirements to be a coach, not only in the minor leagues, but in the big leagues, is so much greater than it was even five, ten years ago. And um, Yeah, the ability to connect, number one, uh, the guys don't care about your, your baseball card anymore. They care about what you can provide for them, how you can help them. And, um, you know, they're also a lot smarter, I think, than we were. They have a lot more. There's more access to information. They're, you know, they're coming from programs that have, you know, labs in college. They have, like, really talented instructors. So there's a high bar when you get to this level. So that's something that we put a lot of thought into when we're hiring, when we're evaluating staff, is, you know, the ability to connect and your content. And, uh, if you have those two things and a good work ethic, you have a chance to really impact a lot of players. Maybe still in the process of learning a lot about what's going on here and everything, but whether it's from this first week or the years you were in Arizona, what do you make of this team? What do you make of this White Sox team? Yeah, I mean, I'm still getting to know a lot of the, the staff here, the players here, but there's a lot of good pieces. There's a lot of talent here, and I think that was something else that uh, interested me about this opportunity. You know, you're going into a situation where you have a chance to things can turn around here. You know, and it might take a little time, but there are definitely pieces here uh, to be a, a winning team. It wasn't that long ago that this team was, you know, winning division. So we hope to turn it around uh, you know, fairly quickly. What do you like about the idea that uh, you have an 87 year old army that's interested in still participating, seeing the team rebuilt again, uh, and it's vibrant every day. Did that come to the equation here of who owns this team and where am I going to play? Oh, going to work? absolutely. You know, I think the, the owner can shape a lot of like the, the culture and, and, you know, the makeup of the organization and getting to work for a guy like, like Jerry, it's, it's it's really exciting. You know, this guy cares. He wants this team to be good. He's involved. You know, it's not just something that he's casually a part of. Like he's he's intimately involved in this organization, and he really wants to see it succeed. So, um, and he's willing to provide the resources to, to go out there and do that. So, yeah, that played a huge role in the decision. Seems like players sometimes come up soon. You know, in the big leagues now. Do you have a philosophy on that last final step? Is the Yeah, so that's something we've talked about over the last couple of days. I know people do it uh, differently in different places, and I think it's unique to each individual. You know, I think if you just have a blanket, oh, we want to see the X amount of bats or innings or things like that, you know, it's not right for everybody. We're going to try and individualize as much as possible, and there might be some guys that are ready to come up. Like, you know, you look on the other side, you see Corbin Carroll played 130 games in the minor leagues, but he was ready to come up. Um, and some guys are going to take longer, so I think – challenging guys to the point where they can handle uh, as they move up and if, if they show us they're ready to handle those challenges uh, you know continuing to push them up to the next level but always being focused on what's going to make them successful at the next level not just the level they're at I think that's the best way to prepare them as best you can for the for the big leagues. Do you have a pretty good handle already on guys in the farm system? I'm sure you know Colson Montgomery is. What's, what's, for example what's your uh, view on him? 
Yeah, so I'm still getting to know a lot of these guys. There, I don't think there was a, there actually wasn't any overlap between our leagues and um, with the D-backs. So uh, still getting to know a lot of the guys. Obviously, like I know a lot of the big boys, and I was at an instructional league the last week out in Arizona. Um, just getting to know them, uh, watch, watching some of the players, and I'll be back out there uh, after the season watching. Uh, we'll have a string camp. We'll have uh, the guys in the fall league. So still, still getting to know these guys and uh, kind of form opinions. How difficult was it to leave there and did they fight hard to keep you uh, knowing that you know, this isn't just a one year thing, it's like you know, a pretty well set when the players are. Yeah, so it, it was really hard, right? I think I was there for nine years. It was the only organization I had known post-playing career. Um, so it made it tough. It was a family atmosphere, uh, much like it is over here. So it was hard to leave. It was hard to leave some of these guys that I'm so invested with them. You become not only close with them professionally, but personally. You know them, their families, their kids, and things like that. So that part's hard. But I think any time in life that you want to do something, um, something great, you got to take a step out of your comfort zone. And I think everything lined up for this. Like this was literally, as I was going back and forth, and yeah, the D-backs fought to, to keep me, but uh, as I was going back and forth and talking with my wife and everything made sense here. And I think the, the last like straw was we were, I talked to Chris, um, you know, he made the offer. I talked to the D-backs, they had kind of made an offer to keep me there and I was just pick up my daughter. We were about a block from the house and we we're sitting at the light. My wife looks up and she's like, do you see that? I was like, I see it. She's like, that's got to be something. And there's a car sitting in front of us at the light. We took a picture of it. And me and my dad only wore one number in the big leagues, 29. And the license plate said Sox 29. They're like, yeah, I think this is meant to be. <laughs>